Hi, I'm Dr. William Starziak. I get a lot of questions about what to do once someone has reached their goal weight with semaglutide. Now, you can stay on it at the full dose. You're not going to keep losing weight once you've achieved your, your full weight loss, and that on average will happen by 14 months. So if you're no longer losing weight, you're stable at your weight, you're on full dose, you've achieved everything you want, what are your options? You can stay on full dose. You won't keep losing weight, it'll keep your appetite suppressed, so you won't put weight on. You can try cutting the dose in half or even more, and you may still be able to maintain the same weight level. You're gonna be getting a little bit of help from the medication, but then you can also work with your own mindfulness in making correct choices. Or you can stop the medication. Now, if you stop the medication, what are the things you can do to make yourself most successful? That's what I wanna focus on here. One, the month before you stop the medication, it's best to be recording how much you're eating and how much you're exercising so that you have a good daily average. So then when you stop the semaglutide, you can keep recording your physical activity and how much you're eating, and then you'll notice if it changes. So say you start taking in 200 extra calories a day. Well, after you stop semaglutide, usually people will get some energy rebound. So maybe you leave that 200 calorie extra, you don't try to decrease it, but you get in an average of 30 minutes of jogging a day that would be enough to offset that increased food intake. So that's, that's one thing. Now the other thing is, if you've been on semaglutide and you've lost weight, you haven't been eating as much as you were before. So your stomach will have gotten used to being smaller. So you'll be full sooner. So at this phase when you stop, it's very important to not eat to 100% fullness. Because what that'll do is it'll gradually stretch your stomach back out so that you'll need more food in order to feel full. If instead you eat slowly, you're mindful of your chewing, you're mindful of when you swallow, so you're not rushing through, and you allow time for that appetite to go away as you eat, for your body to get the signal that you don't need to eat anymore, with the intention of eating only to two thirds of fullness. So that way you're gonna keep yourself from stretching your stomach out so that you can keep this benefit of early satiety with eating. And the next thing is, is that you've already developed the habits, the rhythms of what you need to do to be at that level that you achieved. And the longer that you stayed on the medication at your goal, the more those habits will have become ingrained. So try to lean on those habits. Try to keep those good habits going. So when you stop, you're going to be subject again to all of those things that were an issue before. But now instead of trying to get to where you want to be, you're trying to defend where you are. So that's a little bit of a more advantageous position to be in. So you still need to eat well, high quality foods, ideally organic and seasonal, because those are going to help you maintain a good microflora that's associated with greater ease of getting to and maintaining ideal weight. And you also still need to be you know, exercising. So you've already invested to get the result. And so now you have motivation to keep it because it's much easier to stay there than it is to get back there. You know, especially a lot of people before they tried semaglutide tried a lot of other things and they had a heck of a time getting to that weight before semaglutide. To recap, once you've achieved your full weight loss with semaglutide, you can stay on it at full dose, no problem. You can decrease it down to a lower dose to make it last longer, save money, and that may be enough to maintain your weight loss. If you stop altogether, well now it's important to cultivate mindfulness because that's really where the work is done. Is if, we're, if we develop this mindfulness, then we're present to make the choice that counts. Like we can have all the best intentions, but if we're not present when the moment comes to make the choice, then it doesn't matter, right? So if, if 10.30 rolls around 
and you're not going to sleep yet, your appetite peaks, and you have that feeling that makes you think you should go eat ice cream. Well, if you're not mindful at that time, you're gonna jump on that ice cream train because that's what your feeling is, your feeling and your thinking suggests you down that path. But if you're mindful, you can notice that feeling and thinking and you can distinguish that it doesn't mean you have to go eat that ice cream. You can notice, oh, I have this feeling and an associated thought that I should go eat ice cream, um, but I'm mindful of the fact that I'm at my goal weight. I'm in a healthy weight range. I don't need that ice cream. I don't need it for nutrition. What am I doing it for? Am I doing it for entertainment? Am I doing it for distraction? Am I doing it for comfort? Am I doing it for a reward? Like, what's behind that? All right, if I need comfort, well, maybe I don't have to use ice cream. If I need comfort, well, maybe I should, you know, practice conscious relaxation or um, talk to a friend. You know, there's a lot of other ways to meet those needs. So we, we have this opportunity to untangle food with these other needs that we have. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you found this valuable. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and check out my other ones.